So we've defined our own functions before actually in processing. Um, whenever we say void setup um, to start our program or void draw, we're defining a function called setup and defining a function called draw. Um, now processing calls those functions for us automatically. Um, but if we make up our, our own custom functions, we're gonna have to manually call them. So let's just set up our project real quick and then we'll add our own function to it. So I'm gonna call size 800 by 600 to make this window. Um, and then in draw, I'm gonna clear out the background every frame, make it white like that, that's perfect. So for our example, what if we wanted to draw a really complicated character and we didn't wanna to have to retype um, the commands for them every time we wanted a copy. So in this case, I'm going to say, let's draw a turtle on the screen. So the way we'd normally do that is right after we clear out the background, we start drawing the turtle. So um, maybe I'll draw an ellipse at um, the middle of the screen that's say like 100 wide by 40 tall. So this can be the turtle's shell. And then I can draw a little rectangle that's maybe um, 370 back by 300 down, um, 20 wide, 30, 20 wide and 50 tall. Let's see, this will be the first leg. Eh, that's not bad, but we can kind of move that better into place, shift that back. So that's the back leg. And actually, since I want that leg to be drawn under the shell, I'm gonna draw it first. So then the, the shell, the ellipse gets drawn on top of it. So that looks like this now. Okay, it's coming together. And I need another rectangle that's like that exactly, but shifted more to the right. So maybe it's around 440, let's see. A little bit back, 420. Perfect, okay. So that's the base of our turtle. We'll, we'll call that done for now. We'll put a head on him in a sec. But if I wanted to draw a second turtle somewhere else on the screen, I'd have to retype these same three lines um, and change some of the numbers to reposition each element, and that's such a pain. So this is where functions come in handy. Functions are a way to group bits of code and call them repeatedly. So we can define a new function called turtle. So I'll say void turtle, open and close parentheses, and then I'm just gonna copy, I'm gonna cut actually our code and put it into the body of the turtle. So now if I run the program, nothing's gonna happen because I've defined how to draw a turtle in the function, but we haven't called that in our draw loop. So back here in draw, right after we've done the background, we need to call our turtle function, just like we did for ellipse and rect. Uh, it's not any different as far as processing concern is concerned. So now if I call turtle, I get a turtle. Now this still hasn't solved the problem because if I wanna draw a second turtle somewhere else, I can't call this function again, right? Because it'll always print a turtle at these exact spots. And this is where arguments come in. So um, let's go over the parts of speech of a function. This is the function's signature up at the top. This is the name of the function and what arguments it takes. Right now it doesn't take any uh, inputs. And then here's the body of the function or the block that it executes, all the code that it actually performs. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna ask whenever you call this turtle function that you give us an X and a Y coordinate to position the turtle around and then we'll draw it relative to that. So inside of these parentheses, I'm gonna say I need an integer called X and an integer called Y. And these are variables that are defined only inside of this function. So in here, instead of saying draw it at 350, I can say draw it at whatever the X position is minus, um, I think it was minus 50, and at the Y position. And for this other leg, it's the X position plus, I think we did 30. So from whatever the center point is at X and Y, offset one to the left, one to the right, and then this ellipse should be, oops. Then this ellipse should be right in the center here at X and Y. Now, if I were to run the program, we'd get a compile error. It can see that we've defined this turtle function to require these inputs, but we're not giving it those inputs when we actually call it. So now we could say, okay, give me a turtle at 200X and 300Y. And there's our turtle. So in fact, if we want to draw another turtle, now all we have to do is say turtle uh, 500X 200Y. So now we have two turtles. Oh no, there's a bug, that's interesting. It looks like the second leg on the turtle doesn't have a Y component. So let's go look at our code. 
This is our first leg. It's x minus 50 and at y, and our next leg is x plus 30, 300, ah. So if we make that y as well, they'll both be relative to whatever y we've put in. And there we go. So I'm gonna pretty up the turtle real quick and add some, a head and some color to it. All right, so that's some better looking turtles. At least they have some color now. But what if I don't wanna to have to explicitly position every turtle from scratch. Say I wanted 100 turtles on the screen, um, that's gonna be kind of a problem because I'm gonna to have to come over here and call this turtle function for each one that I wanna draw on the screen and change the numbers and reposition them, you know, it's gonna be a real pain. So I had to type it three times just to get three turtles. And this is where loops come in. We can write a piece of code and loop over it multiple times, changing one parameter of it as we go. So, this is where our friend the while loop comes in. And uh, while loop structure looks like this. It's the word while, and then we have some kind of condition in these parentheses, and whatever we put down in this block will get called every time the while loop executes. So we want to have a way to control how many times this loop happens. We don't want it to go on forever because it'll never finish drawing all the turtles. So we can make up a temporary variable. We can just say um, int i equals zero. So i starts at zero. And we can say while i is less than 10, meaning as long as i is less than 10, this loop will happen. So right now this would still run forever because nothing is changing the value of i. i is zero and it'll always be zero and it'll just keep looping forever. We'll never get out of this section of the code once we get into it. But if inside of here, we do i plus equals one to increase i. Every time this loop runs, i will go up by one until the 10th time when it's no longer less than 10. So if we run this, you might just see one turtle. And that's because I've only told it to draw the turtles in one spot. You can see I'm drawing it 10 times because this call is inside of the loop, but they're all on top of each other. So this is where we can make use of this i value a second time. We could say make your x position equal to, I don't know, 100 plus i times 50. So the first time it comes through here, i is zero. So i, or zero, times 50 is zero. So it's gonna position the turtle at 100 comma 400 on the screen. The second time it comes through this loop, i will now be one. One times 50 is 50 and 100 plus 50 is 150. So now we've effectively sc scooted over by 50 and we're gonna draw another turtle. And we're gonna keep doing that all the way until i gets bigger than 10. So on the 10th loop, i will be 10, 10 times 50 is 100. So we'll be drawing it at 600 x 400 y. So what we're gonna get is a bunch of turtles all on top of each other. Now those guys might be a little bit bunched up um, and in fact, we can do the same thing where we're making use of our i value um, on the y value as well. So we could say start at 100 down plus i times 50. And now we got to get diagonal turtles. We can maybe increase these numbers a little bit. Something more like that. Get a better line of turtles. Um, or if we did it really small, if we just did times 10, we are now grouping them much closer to each other. And you can see there's only 10 turtles. So maybe now we actually want to say, eh, give me close to 60 turtles. We have kind of a cool uh, staircase effect made out of turtles. So this i value here, this is just a variable we made up. And it's common to call it i when you just need a, a way to count because i stands for iterator. When you talk about iterating, you mean that you're doing something uh, over a set of objects or you're doing something a set number of times. You know, if somebody asks you to sort a deck of cards, you'd iterate through the deck. You take each card one at a time and perform an action on them one after another until you got to the end of the deck of cards. Um, in this case, we don't have a preset um, group of objects. We're just drawing on the screen a certain number of times, but we still call it iteration when we do that. The while loop is the simplest kind of uh, looping structure that you have in processing. There are also something called for loops, which we'll talk about in the next episode. So let's take a look at some bugs that you can get here. Um, I was saying earlier, if we didn't increment i, if we just left it at zero the whole time, this loop would never end, right? 
even though it says as long as i is less than 60 keep going but if we never increase i it'll never be greater than 60. so if we run this now without incrementing it you'll see no turtles are being drawn on the screen and nothing else happened you know if we had a more complicated program and other things were supposed to happen after we drew the turtles they'd never come up either it's it's caught up in drawing so many turtles that we don't actually even see the result of drawing because it's never finished with the frame Another bug you could have is if your starting condition isn't correct. If we start I at 120, say, it's already greater than 60. So this while loop never executed because it never had the correct condition to start. So if we run this, it'll look just about the same. Um, we're just drawing zero turtles with a white background. So go ahead and try messing around with different settings in here. See how many, exactly how many turtles you can cram on the screen.